Hello, and welcome to Talking with Famous People. My name is Host Eric, and I am here with assorted famous persons and hosts, L.C., Lorenz, Nandi, and Taylor. And Jordan was here a second ago, but she's she said that we are boring her. I'll and be back. Anyway, we're going to talk today about a personality type known as the Basement Overlord type, also known as ISTP. ISTP has as their function stack, as per Lorenz Walker's helpful chat, thank you for that Lorenz Walker, they have a function stack of T-I-S-E-N-I-F-E -E as their first four, their conscious stack, T-I-S-E-N-I-F-E. -E. So let's start with the dominance function, introverted thinking, that puts them in the same uh, line of work, so to speak, as the INTP, but they're going to manifest quite differently from the INTP. So the TI is going to be the same in the sense that they're going to look for uh, systems to explain the world around them, to take the things that they see in the physical world and make sense of them such that they have abstract identity within a system rather than simply real identity within the physical world. And I think that that's kind of the first thing that TI does is it converts objects in the physical world into objects in the metaphysical world and then causes them to interact about, with one another on a grand conditionality web of some sort. So obviously ISTP then is going to be existing in that world of TI just like the INTP is. But ISTP has a big advantage, I think, over INTP in general in terms of easy life because ISTP has as their tool function SE, the proceed function. So while TI is as a dominant function, something that's going to be checking for the validity and accuracy of a given path or given way forward or given understanding of things, then their second function SE is going to be proceeding down that verified and validated path. This is a very sensible way to proceed, right? First you validate a path, then you proceed down it. Uh, as your nature, you're validating all the time, but as your primary fu tool function, you're actually executing. You're not simply doing more validating. The INTP, in contrast with NE as a second function, they do validating, then they generate more possibilities, which they then validate again, and they generate more possibilities, which they then validate again, and they never get around to doing anything, right? So it's much, it makes a lot more, you, you have a lot easier life when you're an ISTP. I think INTP is capable of grander heights, perhaps, in terms of abstractions, uh, but I, I think that they have a much harder, a harder life in general. So ISTPs have a nice, easy approach to things because there's a certainty about them that doesn't naturally go along with TI. TI tends to want to uh, parse out what's wrong with things, always standing on the position of skepticism and withholding judgment unless it has certainty about things. Whereas with SE in the second slot, it is much more practical minded. I'm going to pause now to elicit any comments from anybody else on those first two functions, TI and SE. Okay, let's go on to the next two functions. So, we're looking at NI as a role function and SE, I'm sorry, uh, FE in the fourth slot as the vulnerable function, as they say. Or, uh, okay, so NI means that as a role in life, their, their job is to take what their TI and SE processes together produce and present them as holistic single truths that are useful to people as such. They're going to process truth as a discovered thing that can be presented in complete packages. They like closed systems. They don't like systems that are subject to a lot of framework work. They don't like framework change in general. As debaters, they'd want to always argue contention level. They don't want to change frames and they don't want to change uh, scopes of, of viewing things. I think this is the limitation of the ISTP abstractly is that they tend to be stuck in the frame that's suggested from their physical world focus in which they operate their TI to explain the world in 
concrete causal ways. They're much more causally oriented than an INTP is much more conditionally oriented. So let's see what the chat says now as we proceed forward. Yeah, we'll TI judging analysis backed with SE external sensing and engagement. Framework equals beliefs or something else. Okay, well, framework in this instance, I mean, let's say we are arguing whether or not the United States should build the transcontinental pipeline, uh, oil pipeline that they were talking about building from Canada to the United States or whatever. And the ICP would be comfortable arguing all the points that ha relate to whether or not this is safe, the likelihood of it of it breaking and spilling oil over the place, the the predicted economic impacts, the benefits to energy security, the that's all contention level arguments. What the ISTP would struggle with is if you go your your manner of discourse is such that it's implicitly supporting a a neoliberal un, un, understanding of the world that converts all resources into capital, whereas a uh, more realistic worldview engages in higher degrees of preservation or something like that. At that point, I've shifted the frame of reference and said, let's argue about discourse instead of arguing about uh, post-fiat policy outcomes. Now the ISTP is is struggling abruptly because that's not something they can prepare for exactly. They, they, they like to have closed systems they can have prepped out. They know all the angles, they know all the economic impacts, they know all the whatever, and they can argue that shit, right? No problem. But if you shift framework on them and say, yeah, but uh, I'm running a discourse critique on you now. And I'm saying that dis discursively, this angle of argumentation itself, this policy angle of argumentation that you're promoting, this notion that government ought to take policies like this and take action like this is inherently harmful and, and disruptive to the individual autonomy of, the, of human beings and undermines the supremacy of local local control, yada, yada, yada. I can make all sorts of arguments like that that would not be about whether or not the pipeline is going to do good or bad, right? That would be changing the framework on them. And then they'd have to struggle with that, uh, and they wouldn't be able to, right? That's the problem with the ISTP if, they're, if you're talking about them in a debate context. However... If you do stay in contention level argumentation, they can be really tough to beat because they got that stuff prepped out to the nth degree. You ask Basement Overlord, what does this function and this slot and this whatever, and he'll tell you he knows. You know, he knows the answer. He knows the correct answer, right? I, I have Eric's random thoughts on the matter, which are, are maybe sometimes correct, sometimes not so correct. Who knows, right? It's Regardless, it's not intended to be correct or incorrect. It's Eric's thoughts on the matter. You know, it's like that. That's the difference between uh, ISTP and an ENTP, right there. Anyway, uh, the fourth slot function FE is where ISTP, uh, I think, struggles less than most people with their fourth slot, just like INTP struggles less with, than most people with their fourth slot, or struggles less obviously. So I think with both these types, they get along well with people. They don't have. They're not obviously awkward in general. I think that nobody points to them and says, ah, that guy is socially unsuccessful or socially awkward. I think their FE problems are more subtle than that. They're things that they experience within themselves uh, as, uh, you know, like unwillingness to, to embrace the significance of relationships, perhaps, that ought to be given more weight than they give it, maybe. I think that's one of the ways in which they struggle, and I think they end up perhaps wishing they had prioritized certain relationships more later on or something like that. I think those are issues for INTP and ISTP, potentially with FE in the fourth slot. But they tend to be socially graceful and tend to be pretty smooth, and the reason is because they have TI in the first slot, so they know they're not very socially adept instinctually, and they're very cautious in uh, how they express themselves socially as a consequence, and take few risks and thus make few mistakes. Um, let's move on then to the fifth slot. Unless anybody, I'll pause again in case anybody wants to make any comments. We've done the first four. I kind of half-assed the NI part, but uh, it's holistic, not not exploratory.
Okay, well, five is TE, right? Before we get to five, though, I want to do a uncompensated advertisement for Coca-Cola. When you are thirsty, Coca-Cola on ice is extremely satisfying. Sounds like a toasting amphetamine sugar craving. <laughs> um, Taylor. Uh huh. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> this is a family friendly show, Taylor. Uh, most of the time. Sometimes it is. Anyway, uh, let's go on to TE. So, TE is going to be something that they at first ignore and think takes care of itself. And think they don't have to think about that, and it's irrelevant, and a, a minor detail, a teeny quibble that shouldn't even really be considered much. Look, the point is, I've given you shitloads of ideas. Which one's the right one is the easy part. That's, you just figure that out in a second. Just figure that out real quick. That's sort of the attitude at birth. Uh, with T-I-T-E, it's more like, well, of course they'll understand out there. Those people will understand this thing I'm talking about. Those people will understand this model I've come up with, or they, or they won't, depending on their willingness to understand it. It's not if they don't understand, they're not trying hard enough. I, I, if they're like, well, but if you're not making it clear enough, you're not making it simple enough. My my feeling about that is my gut feeling is uh, INTP or an ISTP is, well, that's your fucking problem. You know, that's my gut reaction as a TI dom to you understanding the truth that I have figured out with my introverted thinking at first. Now, very quickly, that converts to realizing, well, this is how I'm going to end up interacting with the world, largely, is through explaining my thoughts about things. And so, pretty quickly, the ISTP and INTP uh, begin to understand that TE, the explanation, the explanation of ideas in ways that other people understand, the conversion of concept into practical outcomes, and the conversion of concept into explanations that make sense to other people, that that aspect of TE is fairly critical. And that it does seem to sort of take care of itself, that's true. But that paying attention to it will allow it to take care of itself a lot more effectively. So pretty quickly, I think ISTP and INTP both get a good hang on TE they get a good handle on it, at least rhetorically. INTP rhetorically, ISTP out in the actual world. So ISTP is much more likely to make something really useful, like uh, some sort of engineering device that, I don't know, <laughs> improves batteries by 4%. That's like an ISTP accomplishment, right? I've improved the battery life of things this by 4%. Um, and it's a huge deal. I mean, it's like that's a big deal, right? It just it seems incremental. It seems a little bit less sexy, perhaps, than INTP revelations about the nature of reality and truth, or, or, you know, INTJ whatever. But it's nevertheless just as significant, I think, ultimately. All right, so let's go down to the next one, which is SI in the sixth. Uh, well, so this one is something they'll end up using, not really valuing. Think It's kind of like the fifth, but instead of ignoring it and then coming to value it, they never really come to value it. They come to get used to executing it as a necessary part of, of life. And they, get, they come eventually to own the fact that they're pretty good at it, but they never really particularly think it's something they'd like to spend time doing. And they tend to poo-poo it when they see it as exemplified as a value externally from others. So if others exemplify SI as a value, uh, an ISTP will tend to be like, that's just dumb, right? But they'll actually be good at it themselves and apply it well in their own life. So it's a difference between, in the fifth slot, they're going to be like, well, that shit's not important, or that shit takes care of itself, or that's the easy part. In the sixth shot, slot, they'll be like, that shit's dumb, or I don't like that stuff. And yet they'll be good at it. So for an ISTP, then they're going to have a well-organized schedule. 
are going to keep track of their own life and they're going to have a good sense of where they are and where they're going. They're going to make sure they're comfortable and they don't overexert themselves. They don't commit to too many hours out in the world. They don't, you know, they're going to be attentive to their own needs, which is important. But they're not going to think that the action they spend doing that is important. All right, so then in their seventh slot, they got any. And I have seen this with Basement Overlord. I've watched him come in and ask for, uh, say, well, what are some good ideas for uh, for some episodes of, of his channel, you know, on Basement Overlord's channel? And I gave him a couple possible topics, and he was like, oh, those are great ideas. And, you know, it's, it, it's just, it's a matter of our respective strengths, I guess, that they were just random things I just threw out off the top of my head. But it's not his strong suit coming up with different possible ideas. And I think he, I don't know if he ended up using them or not, but he seemed uh, genuinely happy to have some ideas generated. And that was cool. So I, how, does this hamstring them? I think, it's a, I think it's a pretty good function actually to have in your seventh slot. I, I think that, uh, are you guys talking about what type LC is? Well, then let's type you, LC. Can you, you got a mic, at least? Wait, are we not continuing the ISTP video? Oh, yeah, we are continuing it, but uh, but I don't yeah. want you guys... I, okay, my bad. Thank you, Nandi. Appreciate it. Thank you, Nandi. Um, can, can you please, though, not... Don't ask her then right now if she hasn't been typed yet, because you're going to spoil it. You don't want to spoil yes. your appetite. You're going to spoil your appetite for dinner. <laughs> okay. So anyway, we're almost done with uh, ISTP. So that's any. I think it's a good thing to have in your polar, your place of least resistance, as they say in socionics. Because, I mean, there's a lot of possibilities that are already made manifest out in the world. You don't necessarily need to come up with something new. You can go with one of the existing things in the world. And nothing wrong with that. And those things can all pay off well. And uh, especially if you're really like good thinking, do-oriented do individual like an ISTP. So my personal opinion, um, moving on to the, let me go to the eighth one, then I'll give you my summation. The eighth one for them is uh, FI. So I think that they have what I would call loose cannon FI, which is... It's loosely tied down. It's fairly active. It informs them pretty frequently about how they feel about things, but they can't rely on it because it's not something they consciously use or activate when they think it's necessary to do so. It just sort of happens, but it happens a lot. Uh, I, I see it as, I, like I said, I think it is as the least tied down active function. So I think it's more active than five, six, or seven. And, uh, and it's less tied down, which means it's not consciously controlled. It just sort of happens. That's how I see eight. Uh, but that's just my perspective on it. And that would be for them, like I said, FI. So I think that they could anticipate being pretty effective with FI because it's going to be pretty active. Just as I'm pretty effective with SE, I get a lot of shit done. And uh, I don't really understand how it happens, but it happens anyway. So I think the same thing is probably true for them. They make a lot of good judgments on their feelings. They can kind of count on it when they when it, when they arise to provide them information. They can rely on that information. They just can't rely on that to provide them information in any given moment. So my summation about the ISTP is it's probably one of the easiest types to be in all the sixteen types. That if you're an ISTP, you're a lucky person because you've got a pretty easy, straightforward life ahead of you. And you're pretty well balanced. You're pretty productive without being, uh, well, still be, well, still being, well, still caring about the SI stuff. Still, still understanding the importance of the self, although not consciously valuing it. So that's my perspective on ISTP. Anybody else want to chime in with some, some adventurous thoughts? I thought he was reading the comments. Hey, JC. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Nandi. 
Okay, so I lost connection there for a second. But I'm back now. Um, any, anybody had any comments there about uh, ISTPs that I didn't catch as I was disconnected? Nope. ISTPs okay, then. ISTPs are cool. ISTPs are cool. We're in agreement there. Thanks for watching Talk With Thin People. And please remember the cheese eating. <laughs>